Hey guys and welcome back to the Ring of 57 YouTube channel. Today's video we are going to start going back together with Suzy Q. Okay, my cable clutch is sitting in New York right now. Just got out of customs, so I'm expecting it, you know, Monday, Tuesday, somewhere on there. Worst case scenario, I see it at the end of the next week. Whatever. It's not like I can go racing anytime soon. So, today we're going to go ahead and set the head. We'll torque the head out. That'll all be time lapsed. And then we are going to go through the timing procedure step by step. I'll do some little clips of each step and explain to you guys how to properly set the cams. Because though my cams are degreed, I use the factory timing marks because I'm not an idiot and I want to be able to take them out, put them back in and have them degreed still. So let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so the head is on. We're not gonna go over torque specs because my torque specs are not the proper torque specs. The torquing pattern is, I followed the manual, okay? But my torque specs are ridiculous because of the heavy studs and the type of gasket I'm running. Uh, anyway, make sure you get your chain on the right side of this uh, H-shaped girdle, okay? That's a key point. Make sure the copper washers are in the proper places. The nuts with the closed ends are in the proper places and torque it to spec, it's pretty easy. Uh, one thing to note, it may help you, I've previously done this, is to bevel the sharp edge that this O-ring goes into. And I sanded mine down with all the way to 600 grit, and then I lubed that and the O-ring before setting the head. And you saw it took just a light tap from rubber mallet to go plunk and pop into place. Okay, that's a big one. And then, don't forget your little 10 mil bolt down here, especially when taking the head off. You'll fight and fight and fight before you find it. Anyway, next step, we're going to start setting timing. So. Your trigger wheel won't look like my trigger wheel. We will be going over my trigger wheel and everything in the next video, okay? Yours is gonna have points and a flat spot, okay? On one of your points, you're gonna see a little hairline marked. That line is equivalent to this little blue line. That lines up, see where this blue line is? There's a steel blade right there. Lines up with that. When you're lined up with that, you're at top dead center, number one cylinder. Doesn't matter which rotation because you're setting the rotation right now. So. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna slip in the exhaust cam first. And we want number one on the exhaust cam. So, on these gears, yours are gonna be slightly different, but very similar. Okay, yours are gonna have little numbers. Mine have little dots pointing to the gaps in the T. Ooh, okay, see the dots? Anyway, one of these dots is a single dot right there. I want that pointing forward level with the deck. Let's move to that. If you were curious about that torquing and the washer and nut placement, here it is, okay? A, B, you know, you get it. There's a picture, there's what it means. Okay, follow that. That's your nut and washer placement in relation to the head, front being the exhaust side. There's your torquing pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. 9, 10, 11, 12. You get it. I kind of mixed it up a little bit because I like to do 9, 10, 11, 12. But it doesn't really matter. Not too much on those. Uh, this is a great investment. Get yourself a climber manual. This thing is amazing. And go forward from there. So, just for your reference, once that TDC mark is set, this is what we're looking for, the number one facing level with the seam for the valve cover. So see this little line here going all the way across? That's your valve cover line. This is the top of the cylinder head. All right, our next point of focus is gonna be number two and its correlation to this link. See how the link facing you is a full link and it's on the left side of it? That's what we're looking for. All right, and now you can see two dots, which on yours will be a number two, with an arrow usually, is pointing to the left side of this link. And the number one is flush level, well, almost sub-level, but flush level. Okay, let's see if we can get the angle here to show you. Right, number one's there, it's the top of the tooth, it's the smack center of the sphinx. see what I mean? Okay, it looks a little sub-level from this angle, but it's, it's level. Okay, the angle's gonna deceive you. It may appear to be slightly below, 
but it's better than being above because above means your cam timing is wrong. Uh, we're going to count 26 pins from here over and I'm going to mark those with a paint marker typically but I'm going to do it by eye and then we'll count through it. And we need number two lined up is the first pin and on this one number three will line up with the 26th pin. Correction, this is why you always check the manual. 24th pin. 24. Wrong bike. I've done a lot of stinking top ends lately. Alright guys, so there's our number two mark. Sorry, you got blurry. There's our number three mark on the intake cam. And Lord, I hope I grabbed the yes I did. <laughs> okay. So pin number one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 pin is on mark 3. We are dead in time. Now the good news is, this isn't going to jump or move. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the cam caps in. And I'll show you an image of the order on those. But every one of these cam caps, every one of them, has a letter and a shape. It's very distinct. As long as you got the letters all facing the right direction, the shape should match the image, and I'll show you the image now. All right, guys, and here is the cam cap orientation. This is critical. And note that if you screw up one of these cam caps, you can't replace it. So each one of these is bolted in place at the factory, and then they drill the hole through them. They are machine fit. The term is line board. So they're not compatible with any other bike. You break one, you buy a different cylinder head with the caps. You get a cylinder head without caps, you just wasted your money. You got a bunch of parts and a completely useless head. In any case, front of the engine. A, 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 B, B, C, 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 D, D. That is your orientation. Intake side is the rear of the engine, exhaust is the front. Okay, so you're going to get all those caps in place, making sure to watch out for the dowels. The dowels underneath them like to fall. If they fall and roll around in there, they're going to fall down into the oil return tubes up here where gravity wants to take them, and they're going to go all the way to your sump, and you got to take the pan off, which for most of you means pulling the exhaust. Now, something I'm going to note, and we're going to go over, is these screws screw into these caps. So, something I highly, highly advise while you're here is to take these somewhere, if you're not comfortable doing it, have them drilled and helicoiled or preferably the way I did it, it was a little more expensive, it was about $120 for the kit, time certs, steel time certs. Never had a problem with them since. They do strip super easy. Don't over tighten your valve cover, guys. That's how it happens. And when it happens, you gotta take this off, take it out, drill it, helicoil it, or preferably time cert it, and reinstall it all. So, while you've got this part, I really, 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 really recommend you replace all the threads in these, this one, this one, this one, this one, and two on that side here, and two on this side here, okay? So that's eight M7 by one time certs that you will need. Do it, you'll thank me. All right, so next we're gonna go through and we're gonna start out working from the highest one. So down here, we're gonna go one turn down, one turn down, one turn down, one turn down, one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn. kind of jumping around randomly after that. I start at one end and I just kind of go and work mainly from the middle outward until they all seat. Then you're going to torque them to spec. I can't tell you what spec is because I never torque to spec. You'll find the only thing I ever torque is my cylinder head. All right, so I'm going to run through that quick. It takes a hot minute and we'll be back. All right, guys, and they're all run down nice and level. Uh, if you got into this phase, You've torn it down, you know how this tensioner goes together, but we're going to go through it real quick just to get it covered. Okay, so inside of this tensioner, take this 19 millimeter plunger out. There's a spring. Okay, what you might not know is how to reset it. See this little latch here? Grab with your fingernail, pull it down, push it back in. Okay, for this initial check, we're not going to put a gasket on this. I use silicone, but... We're not going to put any sealant on here, and we're going to put it in finger tight, as it is, and then we'll add the spring and such. All right, and we've got it in there. Only one bolt's tight. The other one's just aligning it. 
Really, it doesn't matter. It just needs to take slack. So as you push this, you heard that zipper. Okay. You take and I'm going to... Oh, God, this is the part that sucks. Especially offhand, one-handed. Aha. And it doesn't need to be tight yet. All right. Now, number one rule when timing any engine. Never use the starter until you know. So we're going to go ahead and verify our timing. You're going to see the slack start coming out of it. And you're going to hear the clicks. Something just jumped. The slack just jumped. Hopefully that wasn't it jumping time. Spin this over a couple times and verify. Okay. So we're going to spin it slow and steady. Because if we're wrong, we'll know it. Down, up. Down. Okay, we're going to stop right at the top dead center mark. Then that's on. We're going to verify our timing is correct. Now, this is where which stroke you're on matters. See, we don't even have a number one mark. So, we've got to go ahead and spin it one more full revolution. Hopefully you got some sort of frame yet. Hey, look at that. I'm actually getting pretty good at that. So one more full revolution. Now, if we'd have been way off on timing, we'd have known it. We'd have hit a valve on a piston. Been there. Done that at 3 in the morning, got mad, went to sleep, woke up, retimed it, world went around. Alright, now we should have, yep, our number one dot lined up. Perfect. And one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 on the number three mark. We are dead timed. Now, I don't have oil in this, so take it for what it is. We're timed, we're set. We can go ahead and run the valve adjustments, which follow your manual. I'm not gonna go through that one by one. It's pretty simple. If you got questions, get one of them books. It's a godsend. Uh, set it for the middle of the range. I set for the wide end of the range, but that's because my stuff wears funny. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get the valves set. Spark plugs in, and that'll be what we'll stop for tonight. We're not going to go any further than that. I'll go ahead and do that off camera. That's nothing I need to show you guys. I've been through it on a video before. Tomorrow's video, we're going to go over the entire... EFI setup on Suzy. We're going to leave out some of the race specific details, but just go over the gist of it. Okay, what components I used, why, where, when, how. Thank you for watching the Ringer 57 YouTube channel, guys. I hope you found that educational. I've been trying to do some educational thoughts in my head, and a question that commonly comes up to me in private messages because people have seen how in depth I've gotten into these engines is related to setting cam timing or putting a head on. How difficult is it to take the head off? Because those O-rings up front that I spoke about with the bevel, they like to start leaking. At that point, the only solution, pull the head. Replace them with OEM. If you're in a salty climate, replace the damn tubes because they're gonna leak too. And do everything we just did. So, like again, like I said again, thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day, guys.